So let's figure out what V would be for this person here on the edge. How would we calculate V uh, for this person? What calculation do we need to do? Um, multiply omega by 4. Yeah, and what would we get? 24 pi. And what units would that come out in? Um, that would be radians per minute. Or would it be revolutions per minute? Because that's what we have there. Ah, well, yeah, so I guess that's a little tricky. What units do you expect V to be in? What are the standard units for V? Radians per second. Take your time. Standard units for linear velocity. Uh, are meters usual? per second. Yeah. And, that's and here, meters, so. it would be meters per minute. Now, if we actually worked this out, we can treat radians as a disappearing unit, which means sometimes it's convenient just to treat a radian as the number one. And just think of it as dropping out. You can think of the unit radian as just another way of writing the number one. Um, so when should you actually write down radians? When it's convenient, when you're thinking of the concept as an angle. Uh, but when should you drop it out? When it's not convenient, when you're not thinking of the concept as an angle anymore. Well, right now, um, so when we were dealing with omega, we were thinking in terms of angular, an angular concept, so we used radians. But now V is a linear concept. We don't want to think in terms of angles anymore, so I'm going to stop writing down the radians. Or I can think of it just replacing it with the number one. We should think that a radian, excuse me, a radian is just equivalent to the number one. Okay. So we ended up with radians per minute. No? Meters. That's right. Because meters are not disappearing and minutes are not disappearing, only the radians. How did I know to drop out the radians? Because otherwise the answer doesn't make sense. Right. Radians shouldn't be in V. This is a linear concept. Again, it's important not to confuse the linear and the rotational concepts. This is one reason why these equations only work in radians, because only radians are a disappearing unit. All right, well, I hope that what I said about disappearing units made some sense. Um, but uh, if not, we just kind of have to memorize that when we use these equations, the units can be confusing, and we just drop out the radians. Uh, so we ended up here with meters per minute. So V over here is 24 pi meters per minute. Now let's figure out what V would be for this person. two meters. They're two meters from the center. So now instead of doing four times six pi, we would do two times six pi. And then the radians would disappear. So we end up with our 12 pi. So do these two people have the same omega or different omegas? The same omega or different omegas? The same for every point. Yeah. And do these two people have the same V or different Vs? The same. What was V for this person? Oh, no, that's different because that's the 4 meters. Right. So the omega is the same as the velocity as well. Right. That was the point of this little example to, okay. that we were going through here. When an object is rotating, every point on the object will have the same rotational velocity. Okay. But they can have different linear velocities. When an object is rotating, every point on the object has the same rotational velocity. We saw that because it's, it's easiest to see that if you think of rotational velocity in revolutions per minute. Well, everything is making the same number of revolutions per minute. But they're not all traveling the same distance per minute. That's pretty easy to see, right? Can you see this person is traveling a bigger distance, right? Because if I traced out a circle, this person would be going through a relatively smaller circle than this one. So we can see this person is going a smaller distance per minute, even though they're going through the same number of rotations. And that's why this person is going slower. This person is going faster. This is one reason why we need different concepts. But this is one reason why it's convenient to invent a rotational velocity. Because if we didn't invent this, we would need to specify a different v for every different person on here. Right. 
Well, that would be tedious. It's much better to just give a single omega for the whole object. So it's nice to be able to give a single omega for the whole object, and then if you ever need the v for a particular person, you can cash that out using this equation over here. So when you're further from the center, does that mean that you're moving faster or slower, translationally? Um, faster. Yeah, I think we know that from our common sense of, of um, merry-go-rounds or, um, yeah, uh, uh, merry-go-rounds again. Uh, when you're out on the edge, it can be hard to hold on because you're moving so fast. But the person who's standing close to the center is very easy to stand in place. They're hardly moving at all. They're going a very small distance. It's only the further out you are that the faster you're moving linearly. We can see that from the equation. The bigger r is, the bigger v is going to be. In fact, if you're twice the distance from the center, you'll be going at twice the speed. And now this equation makes sense too. I was just saying this person is going to travel farther than this person. Even though they're going to travel the same number of revolutions, they're going to have the same theta, but they're going to have different distances that they travel. And again, if you're twice as far from the center, your circle will be twice as big. So again, this equation should make sense as well. Now, the equation for acceleration is analogous. So take a guess, what would be the equation that relates A and alpha? A equals R alpha. That's right. Now, this is a little bit tricky here. Now that we're talking about acceleration, now that we're talking about linear acceleration, we have to go back to what we talked about earlier and remember there is a tangential and a centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration we know is towards the center. And the tangential acceleration is tangent to the circle. Well, this gives us the tangential acceleration. Okay. This equation gives us the tangential acceleration. You already learned a formula earlier in the course for centripetal acceleration. Do you remember what that formula is? You probably used that on a lot of problems. And you calculate centripetal acceleration. That would be a kinetic energy equation. Does it look familiar? Yes. That's our centripetal acceleration equation. You might have used this when you were working on uniform circular motion. So when we're rotating, we have to put subscripts on the linear acceleration, because there's a tangential acceleration that looks like this, and there's a centripetal acceleration. Well, this little equation here just gives you the tangential acceleration. We already know how to find the centripetal acceleration using the equation from earlier. We can see then that acceleration is kind of confusing because there's three different concepts. There is rotational acceleration, alpha, and then there's two different linear accelerations when you're moving in a circle. There's the tangential acceleration and the centripetal. It's kind of confusing. These equations only give you magnitudes. It's your job to put in the right sign. For example, just because omega is positive, doesn't mean that V is going to come out positive. Um, you have to put in this, figure out the signs yourself. Well, again, the symbol that I kind of invented for showing an equation that only deals with magnitudes is a dot. So I always write these equations with dots. Distance is always a magnitude anyway, but I'll just put in the dot for the heck of it. So I'm putting these dots to remind myself the equation here only gives you the magnitude. It's your job to figure out the sign. And this is really a big source of mistakes. People tend to forget the sign. So when you're using these equations, I would figure out the sign first and then do the magnitude. Because if you wait, you're going to forget to figure out the sign. You see the handout that I gave you? All right, well, let's look at the other page of the handout. So the other page of the handout has translational and rotational analogs. Obviously, that's a big theme of what we've been talking about today. Mm -hmm. So on the left-hand side, we have the translational concepts. And on the right-hand side, we have the rotational concepts. Well, a lot of this is stuff we've just talked about. We talked about how translational displacement could be delta x, but angular is delta theta. Translational velocity is v, but angular velocity is omega. Translational acceleration is a, but angular acceleration is alpha. And then here in the middle, I put the equations we just talked about, mm -hmm. the equations for going back and forth between them. These are the links between the linear concepts on the left and the rotational concepts on the right. Okay. 
And I emphasized that in, the, in these middle equations, you must use radians. Actually, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have said it has to be in radians per second. You could use minutes. You could use any consistent unit per time. Okay. But you have to use radians. So what I should have said is those middle equations, you must use radians. Okay. 